Hello, my name is CJ Ren, and today I'll be showing you how to work with engrave mode in Dorico and specifically page templates. This video is not just a tutorial, this is actually someone's score they were having problems with. Thank you to Steve Hirsch, who posted on Facebook about this. I told him to send over the file and I asked permission if I could fix it. Could I make a little video on it? And he said sure. Now that we're over a year into this transition, I imagine a lot of people have written a bunch of things and they're probably trying to get the final product done. Based on what I see on Facebook, this seems to be one of the top questions and it's always about page templates. Anytime there's a problem with the displayed information on the score, which is what Steve Hirsch was specifically asking about, I know it's coming down to page templates and there's a couple giveaways for that. First, you see this panel over on the right side of your screen. This shows you all the pages of whatever layout you have open. In this case, it's the full score. You'll notice there's these little red boxes in these corners. That means there is a page override. That means you're not using your page template when there is this red triangle. Instead, you're overriding it to have custom formatting on that page specifically. This is not how we want to do things in Dorico because we actually have a better system that makes it even easier. Let's talk about the basics of a page template. First, let's learn to navigate all our different options over here. As I mentioned, the first one is your pages of a layout. You can interact with each page and you can also change the order of those pages. You can also set what template those pages use as well as a handful of other options such as creating a separate blank page for a title page. Below that is the page templates, and this is where you edit the information you want to put on a page, and then it applies it to all the layouts that use that page template. Now for a full score, you obviously only have one full score, so you might be thinking, don't I just want to edit the page directly? The answer is still no. You want to do it in the template because when you go to do your parts, you're going to edit the part page template. That will apply to all your parts so they have uniform formatting, and it's good to follow the rules for both layouts to stay consistent. Below this is flow headings. This is if you're using flows or multi-movement works. In a lot of cases, we're not even using this, and sometimes I opt to delete it, although you should remove it from the layout options. Below this, page template sets is one of the most powerful features in Dorico, and this lets you take your templates from one project, export them, and you can save them and even import them into another project to apply that formatting to those pages without having to redo any of the work such as setting where a composer name, a ranger name, or a subtitle, title, any of that information in the project info window would appear on your score or part. Now that we get the gist, of this right side panel, let's open up the first page page template for this full score and quickly figure out that it's not matching what's on the page. The first page of your page template is always referring to the first page and this is where you put the information such as the title or the subtitle composer, all that information goes on there. And looking at this, this doesn't quite look like our page and that's because our page override is on, meaning Steve accidentally edited both the template and then realized nothing was happening and then edited the page directly, got the results he wanted and then basically skipped using the page template. Yes, he got the result he wanted for his full score, but when he tried to repeat that process with his parts, it was not going to work. Let's start by resolving this issue. To remove a page override, simply come up to the page in this pages section, right click it and click remove. I suggest you remove all the page overrides, so alternatively you can right click and click remove all page overrides. Now all our pages are reset to be based off of the templates we have down here. Looking at our subsequent pages, it now looks better because the spacing got messed up on some of the individual pages. Now that they are reset, they are all uniform, but our first page is pretty ugly now. Let's fix that. We will be fixing the first page template for the score because the default page, which is all the pages that just contain the music and whatever information we have set at the top and the bottom, plus our page numbers, is already looking good. Our first page is a little bit of a mess. So we're opening our first page template. Within this first page template, you'll notice there is a left and a right page and you're probably wondering, why is that even needed? Doesn't that just make this more confusing? And the answer is no. It just simply means we have the flexibility to make left and right justified pages, which our default page template is actually doing. That way the page number appears either on the top right or left, depending on how you open your score. For our use case, our first page just needs to be the same regardless of how it's justified. This could be more relevant if you were making something formatted as a book, such as a Broadway play, or a transcription.
subscription book. But again, our use case, we're going to copy left to right or right to left, whatever page you decide to edit first. That way it's the same. I always edit the left page. Doesn't matter which one you choose. And looking at this, I see some things that need to be adjusted. First, we don't have a project clear assist. I'm going to opt to just delete this frame. To select a frame, you don't select within it. Instead, you click the green edge. Now you have the ability to resize it and you also have the ability to delete it with the delete key. Moving on, I want to change all these tokens as they're called. These are essentially variables that reference the information that you have in your project window. I want to change them to be in their own frames. First step, I will just delete all the extra information and leave the project title in this main frame. To edit the text in a frame, just double click in the frame. Now this is just like editing a text box in a Word doc or PowerPoint. I'll delete the subtitle and the dedication. This will leave the project title. Now I will click out of it, select the frame and resize it to be the size I would prefer. I will also make sure there's no spaces up above our project title. I want it to be the only information in this frame. I quickly want to preview this just to make sure we're doing everything correctly. I'll click this copy left to right to make sure both our pages match because I'm not totally sure which page the first page is actually using the left or the right. With that done, I'll click apply and close and we should see all our changes reflected on the first page. Open back up that page template. Let's resize this project composer frame and remove the extra spaces above the actual token. Double click and just get rid of all the spaces if there are any. Now resize the frame. It's good practice to not have have giant frames taking up your whole page template because it becomes hard to interact with it later on because there's all these collisions. It's best just to allocate the correct amount of space for them. Next, we need a subtitle. Looking over here on the left side panel, we have the insert frames options and we have a couple options. We can insert a music frame, which is not what we're trying to do. We can insert a graphic, which you can guess is a picture you can attach, but we are looking for the text frame. Just click it and now you can drag and insert a box on your page. I generally make these span the whole width of my page so it's automatically justified to the center based on the margins that are set in your layout options. Double click in that box to start editing the text and let's center justify this. This is a super convenient little text editor. It's just like you would expect from something like Word. Now you're probably thinking, how am I supposed to know what token to put? Right click and you will get all your different options. Find the one you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for project info and subtitle. Just like that, Dorco puts our token for us. You don't even have to memorize these. Just right click. Let's repeat this process for the project dedication up at the top. I want to see my progress so far, so I'll click left to right, click apply and close. And we're starting to get close. Something doesn't look quite right because our project subtitle isn't showing up. This to me indicates our project info is not correct. Open that up with either control I or going to file in project info. Sure enough, there's no subtitle under the project section. Instead, it was put under flow one. This was because Steve Hirsch was trying to make the information show up on the page, but that page override was preventing it from happening, basically trying things by trial and error, but it wasn't working because of that page template. Now that we have all this information working, we're not even bothering with this flow. Let me copy that subtitle and put it into the project section of the project info, apply and close. Notice now the information is now updated on our score. This is because using the project info window and the page templates means everything will get the same information all at once. This is especially useful when we do our parts here shortly. There are a few final adjustments I want to make to this, such as changing the size of the font and also making the subtitle appear in two lines instead of one. Also, I want to fix some of the things that got messed up when Steve was working with this. This frame here, the blue frame is a music frame and it's not spanning the full width of that margin. I'm just going to drag it over to fix it. I jump back to my full score and looking at this copyright, it looks like we can allocate a little less space for this copyright frame and then extend our music frame. I'll do exactly that in our page template. Now let's fix our font size and line spacing up at the top. Let's change the size of our project dedication to be pretty small about here. I want it to sit directly above our project title, so I will adjust these frames to achieve that. I think the font should be even a little smaller. Let's check that. I think these can get even closer together. I will opt to move my title a little higher. Basically, this is all up to how you feel this should look, and it's very flexible in achieving the results you want. It's just drag and drop, and then it automatically references the info from your project.
project info. For this bottom line, I'm going to change the size of this text frame. That way it'll condense my text. You can get super specific because it shows those little rollers. This is starting to look like the original page. I think we can make the title a little bigger, make all the other text a little smaller. Simply keep adjusting the frames and the text the way you see fit. Click copy page layout left to right, and then click apply and close. Now we have a pretty good looking first page. If you want to preview what this looks like without the frames on the page, you don't have to click print every time, which will show you a clean page. If you click the backslash on a US keyboard, note that this is different on different keyboards, uh, such as a UK English keyboard. I learned that the hard way. You can get a clean preview of your score without having to jump to print. I took my time and went very slow showing each and every step and consideration regarding page templates. Now we can repeat that process for our part template and I will do it in real time so you can see how quick and efficient this really is. First, let's navigate to a part. Looking at this part in this right side panel, there are no page overrides, which means we will be using our templates. Although I am noticing in these little previews, these templates are a little messy. What I'm going to do is open this up, delete everything, and then repeat all the steps we were doing for our full score, just in regards to how we want it to look on a page. And here's real time editing starting now. Why show the full process of editing this part page template? I want to quickly talk about the design philosophy I think Dorka is using and why I think it's a push in the right direction for composers of today and engravers. Dorka's approach is not to emulate working on a score and having manual control over it and basically doing it handwritten. Instead, it's creating a tool to write music in a fast, efficient way that you probably haven't experienced before. What that means is Dorko seems a little more technical because it is. As a younger composer at the age of 25, I grew up in school using Microsoft Word and PowerPoint since first grade. That's what I was learning in computer class. So naturally when I'm using something like Dorico, it feels easy and familiar because I already have the experience with all these tools because they feel just like Microsoft PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. I know that introduces some challenges for some users, but I promise if you approach it with that mindset of this is a technical tool that gives me the ability to handle tasks in new ways that weren't possible before, you'll find that Dorico is the right tool for you. This will finish up in a couple of seconds. Yeah, the entire first 10 minutes of the video I did in one minute, including fixing it, it's pretty quick. Just like that, all our information is put on this page. Of course, tweak it as you see fit. And if you want to put the copyright info at the bottom, let's go ahead and do that one time, just as a proof of concept. Now that I have all these frames laid out the way I think it'll look best, we have more room for the music on our first page, so I will drag the music frame up. Copy left to right, apply and close. The last change we need to make is adjusting these page frames on the default pages. Right now, I believe they should be taking up more of the page. While you have a part open, open up the default part page template. Here we'll see there's some errors and our frames are not taking up the full page. What I will do is delete this stray text box, drag my frame up and also down to fill up the page. I'm gonna leave a little room up top so I can put the layout name. Now I'll click the left or right. You'll notice the page numbers are not on the correct size depending on if it's taped left or right. On the left page, I'm gonna drag this and slide it over to the other corner. Let's preview this, click apply and close. That's looking more correct, but I also wanna display my layout name and score name up at the top. That way players don't have to suffer as much. Let's insert a text box. If we want to figure out those tokens, don't Google them don't try to type them just right click project info and title I'll put a dash and right click and go to layout name let's center justify this let's change the size of this and pull it up I will make this span the whole width that way I know it's center justified and I can pull my music frame up to intersect with that the only thing I really shouldn't have done first was move this page number because I do want to click the copy left to right so I don't have to redo that I will take this page number on the right page and move it. Apply and close. And the page templates for this score and parts are completely done. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I covered everything you could possibly need to fix a project that you're working on and the page templates just aren't working out for you. Please let me know if you have video requests down in the comments. Once again, I want to thank Steve Hirsch for letting me use your project. I took a listen to the composition and it was a very nice piece. I'm making videos again. I graduated grad school. I got a job and didn't have any time, but now I have time. So thank you for watching and I'm glad to be back.